pilgrim trails across France converged at Osterbat in the foothills of the Pyrenees. There, the group of 20 or so pilgrims who had been travelling alongside me since I'd left Tours swelled to about 70. Some were prosperous citizens, some probably on the run from justice, a few drunks and several monks and clergymen. Several languages were spoken, including Flemish, a German tongue, and a southern French language called Oc. Nevertheless, there was no lack of communication among them, and as we crossed the Pyrenees, they sang, played games, told stories, and in several cases, had love affairs. While my baby and I kept mostly to ourselves. Ganz schön frech, die mit ihrem Kind. Hush now. Richtig dreist. Kann ein Mann nicht einfach mal seine Ruhe haben? Der Weg aus Babenberg war doch anstrengend genug. Ein Kind. Hat ja auch gar nichts verloren. Stimmt doch, oder? Psst, jetzt ist aber gut. I'm sorry. He has to cry himself out before he'll fall asleep. It will give you a strong voice one day, won't it? Do you have children? Tomorrow. Dear Lord, what are you doing? You should get out of the water. It's freezing. My ring. I lost my ring. Dear Lord, please show mercy. <laughs> Come back to me. Please come back to me. Where are you? Where did you go? I found it. Yes! Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You are a very kind woman. So very, very kind. I'm glad I could help. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much.
I can see this ring is very precious to you. It, it was a gift from my stepmother. She thought I would stay forever, but I didn't. Why did you leave? Oh, I... I... I thought I didn't belong. She always said I was her daughter, but I was sure she was lying. I was so selfish and so stupid. Too stupid to see I really was happy. Tell me about your stepmother. She was such a kind woman. So very, very kind. Maybe you really weren't happy. I don't know. I was very young and thought I was unhappy because I didn't live close to the sea. But in the end, the sea did not feel the same about me. The cold there made me sick. It took away my sight. Why didn't you go back? She had been so angry when I left. So angry and disappointed. She would have never let me return. Ah, that's why you went on the pilgrimage. Yes, so that St. James might see my devotion and I will be united with my mother in heaven. I'm just not as kind as you. Not kind at all. You're too hard on yourself. I don't know. I, too, am trying to make amends with the one man I loved the most. I was told he went straight to Santiago. You will know soon. Not soon enough. It's still four weeks till I get there. He'll be there, I'm sure of it. I hope so. I just feel... I just feel that with every day that passes, I'm losing him a bit more. And that the only thing I can allow myself still to hope for is not love, but forgiveness. I understand. Hey, hush now. Not long now and our journey will be over, hmm? The woman's name was Alba. She came from a small town somewhere in Catalonia. I quickly got used to her constantly feeling out for her stepmother's ring and the sad guilt that would always follow in her milky eyes. I wasn't sure if she appreciated my company, but I couldn't leave her on her own either. By the time we reached Los Arcos, she'd stopped talking, while I kept on dropping a kind word here and there to let her know I was still by her side. Alba believed herself to be of weak mind and body, and yet she walked the Camino with a strong sense of purpose that willed her onward. It made me wonder about what I'd told her about my own journey. Did I hope for love, or was I really traveling because I needed him to forgive me? But what was there to forgive? My decision to marry Alfred had been in the best interest of the people of Shiring. It was a sacrifice I had to make to stop the evil reign of William Hamley. These questions had haunted me for a long time now. But if I really was going to see Jack soon, it was time to make up my mind.
around Leon, the path began to gradually turn uphill. It was only two more weeks till we'd reached Santiago. The baby was in a good mood, and so, surprisingly, was Alba. After Astorga, the trail got more difficult. Alba became slower and slower, and we had to rest more. She became quiet again. The strain on her old body grew, and she worried that she might not be able to reach the end. Still, we managed to push onward. The next morning, she refused to get up. Her breathing was disturbingly shallow, and she hardly noticed me touching her forehead. Everything hurts, she said, and urged me to continue without her. Of course, I stayed with her. I brought her food and water and sat by her side. But day after day, her condition grew worse. She kept on urging me to go, to find Jack, saying the monks of Ponferrada would take care of her. I was about to leave when a monk stopped me. He urged me to stay at least for another day, and feeling that he was right, I remained. I'd hardly known her, and most of the time she'd tried to push me away, as if she considered herself a nuisance that slowed me down and who didn't deserve company. It wasn't until a few moments before she died that, for the first time, she smiled at me, and I like to believe that she saw me smile back. I still like to believe that here, in this unlikely place, dying next to a near stranger, she'd found a moment of serenity and happiness, but she'd not reached Santiago. When I left, that thought still haunted me, to see that a journey could come to an end so suddenly. But what would be different if she had reached Santiago? Could she have been disappointed by what she found? After months of hard travel, the child and I finally reached Santiago de Compostela. In the evening, we attended mass in the great cathedral, then started to roam the town looking for my dear Jack. It was almost dawn when finally a priest pointed me to an inn close by. Buenos dias. Do you understand me? Sinto cho ben, pero non temos camas disponibles. Um, no, I don't need a room. I was told a friend of mine stayed here some time ago. A red-haired Englishman called Jack. Do you remember him? Eu sou te falo en galego, miña rula. Francais? English? I'm looking for a man who likes to read a lot. El logo anda sempre cun libro en riba. Have you seen anyone like that? Pero, por que levas un libro en riba? Basta escangallar co peso. Hmm, she doesn't even understand that I'm looking for a person yet. I already tried that. No one has seen or heard about Jack.
Hmm, she doesn't even understand that I'm looking for a person yet. They didn't have any clues for me. you, Jack. Have you seen a man called Jack Jackson? Jack? He's a mason. Jack? Yes, have you seen him? Pasanche por aquí centos de peregrinos, e cada un eche de seu pai. Vas ter que ser algo máis específica. I don't understand. I was told that Jack stayed here, but how can I make myself understood? Cousinha, eche rubio. Si, sí, redhead. Have you seen his father, Padre del Nino, Jack Jackson? Ven sendo un peregrino. What? E un peregrino. Oh, no, no. He is not a pilgrim. Entón, quen ven sendo? He's a mason. Ai, mal raio, me partas e entendo o que me estás a contar. Oh, is there someone inside who might be able to translate for us? Nena, que te merque que te entenda. A translator? A, a guest? Agora mesmo, estanche todos a dormir. Case che diría que volvas mañá por la mañá. Um... Let me show you something. He's a mason. He builds things like that. Ah, eche mason. Albanel. Si, sí, si, sí, a mason. It's the same word in Galician. <laughs> Por aquí pasan una morea de masons. Non me poderías decir algo máis sobre él? Um, oim falar dun mason que diz que se dedica a traducir libros en Toledo. Polo visto, di que se chama Jack. Yes, Jack. Have you seen him? Non sei cal será o seu apelido, pero... Ben, é certo que non chai moitos masons rubios aos que lles guste ler. Se tan desesperada está, por que non vai a Toledo a comprobalo por si mesma? Entón, marchou pra Toledo. He went to Toledo... A Toledo marchou, sí. Di que o teu Jack podería estar en Toledo. All right, 
So, I will go to Toledo then. Gracinias. I just pray that I understood you correctly. Buenos dias. Parlez-vous français? English? Of course. How may I help you? Oh, I was told a man named Jack Jackson lives in this house. Who told you this? A group of scholars living at the edge of town. They said he used to translate old scriptures about mathematics before he moved here. Please wait here. I will talk with Master Rashid. It's his. Oh, there you are. May I ask who let you stroll around our house? Uh, I was asked to wait here. Yes, my servant told me already. My father's not here at the moment, so you'll have to make do with me. Unfortunately, I must disappoint you. There's no one called Jack living in this house. Maybe he took a different name, then. Oh, I'm sorry, but this is not easy for any of us. I think you should know that Jack and I are promised to each other. Maybe we should go inside. The sun's burning, and my mother doesn't need to hear us. Jack told me about you. You are Aliena. You're the one who rejected him and married his stepbrother. And now you want him back. I'm here because I love him. He always said that he had come here to find out about his family. But instead, he found out about everything else. About philosophy, mathematics. 
When he and my father met, it was love at first sight. They studied together and made great plans. But in the end, Jack would always start talking about his cathedral again. This great church he would build one day. Rib vaults and pointed windows. He'd ramble on about it for hours and stare up at that ceiling. We three sat here for hours and talked. And then in the evenings, it would be just the two of us. So many strange ideas about the future. Some barely more than silly dreams. Others almost in arm's reach. Well, where is he now? Well, he's not here anymore. My father had offered him work as a master builder here in Toledo. He would have been well off and free to spend his evenings under vaults like this, with me as his wife. But in the end, he refused. Tell me, did you really marry his stepbrother? It was a mistake. I know that now. I did it to fulfill a promise I'd made to my father. I thought I had no choice. I didn't want to hurt him. Believe me. I do. You know... <laughs> he left me because of you. Even after all you did to him, he couldn't let go. You can be glad that you ran into me and not my mother. She was enraged when he left. <laughs> he can have that effect on people. But apart from that, we made our peace with him. Father even gave him one of his favorite pieces of his collection as a parting gift. A small wooden statue with stone eyes in exchange for his slingshot. Would you mind telling me where he went? He went to Paris, to work on the Cathedral of Saint-Denis. He said he never found out about his father, so there was no reason to stay down here anymore. Paris? Yes. If you find him there, tell him I don't miss him. I am sorry for all this. You don't have to be. What is the child's name, by the way? Well, he has none yet. I wouldn't name him without Jack. Isn't that a bit silly? <laughs> Maybe. But he's his son as well as mine. It's his right to have a say in it too. Then off to Paris. That baby needs a name. He will get one. Thank you. I travelled back along the Way of St. James, passing through Astorga, Lyon and Burgos, I crossed the Pyrenees, revisiting Bordeaux, Angoulême, Poitiers, but never stayed longer than one night. The closer I came to Paris, the stronger my old doubts and fears resurfaced. If Jack really was there, what was I to say to him? Pull him very, very close, wishing for all the wounds to heal as quickly as they could.
there, there. Are we awake then? You almost missed this. Look at these colorful windows. Look at the light. <laughs> Ali. We came to see you, Jack. Uh, we? Is... is he... <laughs> he is your son. My... my son? I'm sorry. It's not your fault. Ali, where do we go from here? Wherever we go, I want to go with you. Will you, will you marry me? <laughs> Both of you. <laughs> we will. We stayed in Paris as husband and wife. And our son, Tommy. The days went by quickly. Jack had learned much working as a builder in Saint-Denis. Days became months. Then after a year, we both grew restless. Where can we go from here, we asked ourselves again. We both confessed that we wanted to see our families, our friends. And then we knew where we wanted to go. Home. Even if it was in shambles. We need to hurry. The ship to England will leave soon. What's going on here? Whatever it is, if the crowd doesn't clear up, we'll miss our ship. Uh, excuse me. What's going on here? He's a thief. He told us lies and stole our money. But isn't that just a simple jongleur? That poor man. We need to help him. Oh, he doesn't like it. Uh, neither do I. Do you know what's going on? Oh, chaos. I can't get these people to calm down. God knows I tried. What happened? The jongleur told the crowd a few stories. Then he sold people some miracle charms, but it was just fairy tales and painted stones. Well, it always is. I know, but I'd need a real miracle to calm them down now. Otherwise, they'll rip him apart. We can't possibly push through, not with the baby. Behold the Holy Virgin. If it takes a miracle to make these fools stop, then give them one. You're right. I have to make her weep. It's the only way. Behold the Holy Virgin. If it takes a miracle to make these fools stop, then give them one. 
You're right. I have to make her weep. It's the only way. Do you see? It's working. Your friend Rashid must be quite the miracle worker. going on? The Holy Mother! She's crying! Revere the Holy Mother, for she has blessed us with a sign from the heavens. Cease your doings right now, and witness the miracle. It's true! Lord in heaven! Why is she crying? She weeps for your sins. What has this man done to you that you would treat him like a wild animal? He tricked us and took our coin. And you would kill him for your own foolishness. The Holy Virgin weeps, for you are not living by the word of God. It is the Mother of God. F -f Forgive us, Holy Mother. Where did she come from? She was given to me by a scholar in Toledo. We think she cries because... Jack, don't! It's a miracle! A miracle? A miracle? Yes! <gasps> Listen to what he has to say. The Holy Virgin has chosen this young family to protect her. Tell us all where you are headed. Her destination is beyond these waters. In the small town of Kingsbridge, in the earldom of Shiring. There she wants to rest. Kingsbridge? Where's that? Hail Mary! Make way for the Holy Virgin! Hallelujah! Make Robert well! Huh? Blessed Mary, let my daughter conceive! Give us a good harvest! They're donating to ask for her blessing. Uh, oh. The weeping Madonna shall hear your prayer. And with your donations, I... I shall build her a new shrine at Kingsbridge, a cathedral. <gasps> it's... It's you. Uh, who do you mean? You? The red-haired ghost. Me? A ghost? Uh, my husband is very much alive. I've known him since he was 12 years old. But he drowned. By God, you drowned. 24 years ago. On the white ship. <gasps> my poor, poor son. My Jacques. His name was Jacques. Jacques Cherbourg. Jacques Cherbourg. Thank you.